Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mm, tastes like burning. <sighs> Have you ever woken up convicted that there's more that you could do? That there's more that God expects out of you? And that many times you feel like you don't know what direction you should be going. The teachers would tell you to let scripture guide you. So I, uh, I let scripture guide me this morning and I was led to Jude. And because of that, I would like to share this with you. So please grab your Bibles, read along if you'd like. This is the letter of Jude. Greeting. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this holy condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels, who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in an eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in like manner, these people, also relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses. He did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do uh, not understand. And they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them. For they walked in the way of Cain, and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error, and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love's feast, as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds, swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted, while wild waves of the sea casting up the foam of their own shame Wandering stars from whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of their, of their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud mouth boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. 
but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who have doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire, to others showing mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now forever. Amen. The book of Jude. We live in a nation right now that is defiling itself before a holy God. I firmly believe those that are in power will one day take men like me out of the fight. We will not have a voice anymore in this fight, at least on these platforms. And who knows what they would do. Please understand that the real threat to this government is not violent domestic extremists. It's not radical Islam. The real threat are Bible-believing Christians who believe in the power that God has given us and the authority that we walk in. That is what you fear. And that is why they must take everything that is good and holy and turn it against us. They're going to use the laws against us. They're going to turn anything that is good evil and everything that is evil into good. I say it all the time, train, prep, and pray. But worship God. Be not in fear. We are not due his judgment. But spread the good news. Tell someone today that Jesus loves them. And ask if they repented of their sins. It took me a long time to come to Christ. Too long. And it cost me a lot. But if even someone like me is redeemable, then many of you who are listening to me right now who are questioning the same thing, are you redeemable? I would ask you to go to your prayer closet, call upon the Lord, and accept him as your Savior. I wish the leaders of the churches would get outside of their four corners in their buildings. And some of them are multi-million dollar buildings. I wish they would get outside and evangelize. I wish they would get outside and start rebuking sin that the leaders have caused this nation. I watched a video last night of a group of men called the Proud Boys. You may have heard of them. And they interrupted a, how do I say this? I'm not going to kick off YouTube. A other people's story hour, man dressed as a woman story hour. And all they did was they, they went there to present the fact that they, <laughs> you have people that are sexualizing children. And they are corrupting them and turning them into the next generation of degenerates. Our children are our most precious commodity. Next to that is our time. We are running out of time. I don't know when the end comes. 
No one does. But I would be prepared today. Every day, you should be prepared to meet the Lord. Some days I want to meet the Lord faster. Some days I, I, I want to see him 100 years from now. That way I can watch my kids grow up. But we work on his time. And because of that, we should be right in our hearts. We should be following his word, walking in faith, upright and strong and encouraging each other, not tearing down one another because of our theology or our different religious dogmatic practices. It's the problem with religion. The book of Revelation even speaks of the seven churches that are judged. If you haven't read it, read it. Understand why. Do the right thing as Christ commands you. Love one another. Be kind to one another. Be kind to your neighbor. But if you haven't already, sell one of your cloaks and buy a sword. It's getting dangerous out there. The enemy is surrounding us, not just physically, but spiritually. So be prepared. Be of good courage. Have faith. God is with us. And God is with us who can stand against us. Have a good morning.